Uh, yes, uh, thanks, yes, and okay. I thank the organizers uh, for giving me the opportunity to present my talk, which is on this work here. So this talk is essentially about non-Hermitian quantum optics. So non-Hermitian systems in quantum regime is extremely active and also experimentally very active. And it has like, for the last couple of years, I have found like more than 10 experimental papers per year, and this is just one of them. Uh, however, uh, none of these experiments in quantum regime feature a gain medium. Okay, so this brings us to some questions. And the question, uh, the main question is like, can one build a quantum system whose time evolution is governed by an effective non Hamitian Hamiltonian featuring a gain and loss that can be perfectly balanced? Is it possible within current known technology? How does such non-effective, you know, effective non-Hermitian description microscopically arise out of Hermitian quantum mechanics. Uh, what are the effects of quantum fluctuations? Can such a device be useful? Now, these are some questions that we had actually at the end of the previous non-Hermitian ICTS meeting in 2018. And that uh, essentially started uh, my collaboration with Yogesh, who was there at, uh, was there physically at that, uh, ICTS meeting and Manus who was, I was an ICTS and Manus was one of my uh, PhD co-supervisors. And that resulted in this work where we have essentially uh, partial answers to all these questions. Uh, and we, what we show here is that it is indeed possible to build such a system by combining various state-of-the-art components in hybrid semiconductor superconductor circuit QD. Now, the, uh, what is this uh, hybrid semiconductor superconductor circuit QD? This is uh, an uh, this is an architecture which is uh, which is uh, very promising in quantum technologies, and there has been uh, two works, uh, two reviews uh, last year uh, at least. And I, to my knowledge, the existing quantum computers are also just uh, are built on this uh, architecture. So. This is uh, our setup for this uh, balanced gain loss system. So, what we, so we have essentially two coupled cavities with a voltage bias W. This is my cartoon for this. Uh, so we have two cavities with their own losses and this, this entire unit here is the voltage bias double quantum dot. Uh, what I'm showing here is a circuit diagram of the same. Uh, so this basically are the two coupled cavities. Uh, these are the losses. Uh, this, this will give uh, some connection to some bars essentially. And this guy here is the uh, double quantum dot. So these are essentially the two dots and these are the source and drain uh, leads which will give uh, the chemical potential bias which is given here. One important point I want to make is uh, this entire, each part of this circuit actually exists. And what we, the, the controllability that we need is basically some parameter of the double quantum dot uh, and then uh, controllability of this coupling between the cavities and then uh, some controllability of this uh, loss here. And there are many experiments actually where these things are individually there. So what is not there is just uh, putting this thing together uh, in this form. So this is a one experiment where uh, there is a voltage bias double quantum dot. I mean, there are many others, but this is one. And then in situ coupling of uh, uh, in situ tuning of coupling between cavities is this is one experiment. There are many others, and in situ coupling of uh, in situ uh, tuning of this cavity losses there in this experiment, and there are many others, many other experiments like this. So how do we uh, uh, describe this full thing theoretically? Uh, we take a completely microscopic approach, which is uh, we write down a Hamiltonian for everything, including. Uh, the baths uh, that give the losses and uh, also the fermionic baths that give the fermionic leads and also some phonons. So this thing in red here uh, is, the ham is the essentially the Hamiltonian for this unit, this full thing. So we have a double quantum dot and the fermionic leads and the coupling between the double quantum and the fermionic leads. And then we have phonons. Now these phonons are not really important to get this balance gain loss, but this is this will be there in the experiment. So we have taken it. Uh, so we have phonons and the coupling between the double quantum dot and the phonons. And this thing in blue is basically just the Hamiltonian of the two uh, 
cavities with, with their losses. So these are the Hamiltonians. So the, a double quantum dot is modeled just by two fermionic sites with a strong repulsive interaction between them. So this epsilon and TC, uh, epsilon is called the detuning parameter and TC is just the hopping. These two parameters are very widely tunable in experiments and V is always sort of very large. And uh, so these are the two coupled cavities, the usual one, uh, lambda being the coupling between the cavities and the coupling between the double quantum dot and the, and the um, cavities of this form. Now this is not uh, some arbitrary form is in these experiments that I showed, it is actually known to be of this form. Okay. Uh, and the parameter, uh, so, so what is, what can be shown is what is known actually, like even experimentally and theoretically is that, uh, so it, so where Omega Q is this thing. Uh, so in this regime, essentially this double quantum dot behaves like a population inverted qubit with a frequency which is given by this. And we will, since epsilon and TC are very widely tunable, uh, we will just take it to be in resonant with the uh, cavities and the temperature is quite low. And uh, this is uh, how the losses uh, should be. And there is one more very important uh, thing, which is here, which is uh, basically the, this n photons is an average number of photons in the two cavities. And that cannot be too large. That is because this coupling here is actually nonlinear, but we are going to use a linearized theory. And if we use a linearized theory, we need this uh, approximation to hold. So given this setup, what we do is we systematically integrate out everything except the cavities. And we end up with these operator equations of motion. Now look at this, these are operator equations of motion. There is no expectation values here. So these are like, you can calculate all other things from here. So, and here we have our effective non-Hermitian Hamiltonian. Now microscopically derived for this uh, setup. So these are the usual losses. And here we have a gain in terms in, in the delta. So this delta thing has, uh, so there is N1 SS is basically the higher level of the qubit and N2 SS is the lower level of the qubit. So when the this thing is population inverted, this will be positive and that will give the gain. Now this is non-Hermitian also because the off, uh, all the off diagonal elements are also not the same. However, in our choice of parameters, this delta is actually uh, not very large. I mean, much smaller than one. But we have kept it in all the calculations, but this really doesn't play such a big role as uh, this thing here. Now, the more importantly, we have this term. Now, what is this term? This, so because of the, uh, the population inverted qubit, you will have some quantum fluctuations, which will give some quantum noise, and that is captured here. So you can take it as a, a noise with a power spectral density, which is given like this. Now, once again, this power spectral density is not phenomenological. It is derived microscopically from the full model. Okay, so okay, we have our effective Hamiltonian, uh, which is pretty uh, like effective uh, non-Hamiltonian Hamiltonian. Okay, we can do the usual stuff and get uh, what is the condition for EP and so on. Uh, uh, but yeah, sorry, sorry, can I ask? Can I ask a quick question? Uh, yes. Yeah, so in your previous slide, uh, this uh, the noise, uh, this P of omega y does only depend on N1? It turns out like that. It, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, I don't, okay, I cannot uh, give you a reason. Oh, fine, why. go ahead, no worries. Okay, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so this is the uh, effective Hamiltonian. We can do the usual uh, stuff and can find the EP like this, but we are interested in balanced gain loss. So balance gain loss of, of course means that this has to be zero. Uh, so this is the condition. And when this is uh, balance gain loss uh, condition is satisfied, you can uh, check that this, it is pretty symmetric with this being the PT operator. And this slightly uh, different thing is there only because of this additional delta. Uh, and of course, uh, as is known that is for lambda greater than lambda EP, this we have a real eigenvalues. So if, if we look at expectation values of B1 and B2, they will show persistent oscillations. But the, there are two important questions, which are basically, can it be like within the experimental parameters that are known already, can is it possible to balance gain and loss? And uh, 
what are the effect of quantum fluctuations so actually it is very, it is actually possible to uh, balance gain and loss within the parameters of the experiments that i referred to in the beginning right so uh, the thing is like this uh, the nice thing is about this formula is you can essentially just rearrange some terms and write it like this now the good thing about this formula is uh, on the left hand side we have everything that depends on epsilon and tc and on the right hand side we have things which do not depend on epsilon and tc now epsilon and tc are remember the are parameters of the double quantum dot which are very widely tunable so we can just uh, tune epsilon and tc of the double quantum dot and satisfy this equation so that is shown here so what this this uh, black line is essentially this right hand side calculated with these parameters and uh, this blue line is the left hand side as a function of epsilon so it's parameterized in terms of theta but it's essentially uh, changing epsilon and tc and the values of uh, these things that satisfy these two points are given here it, once again all these parameters are very much within the experiments that i referred to in the beginning okay so now what will, what are the effect of quantum fluctuations on pt symmetric oscillations okay we can uh, do that here so we we just test it with uh, some initial condition of the two cavities which is uh, the one cavity is in a coherent state the other cavity is empty and if we look at the expectation values of uh, like b1 square and like mod of b1 square and mod of b2 square then we see perfect oscillations that's perfectly fine but if we want to look at uh, some fluctuations above that which is be given let's say like this then we'll see that this this diverge as t okay so the fluctuations in the pt symmetric phase okay i'm talking about in the pt symmetric phase the diverge as t and this is what i'm plotting here is the photon current between the two cavities and they also that will also diverge as t actually so since the fluctuation diverge as t essentially you will find that the occupations of the two cavities will actually increase with t and eventually this condition will not be valid so this linearized theory in, is going to uh, is is not going to hold and then basically quantum fluctuations are going to eventually kill the pt symmetric oscillations uh, so this is this happens for lambda greater than lambda ep so i have uh, other uh, so lambda less than lambda ep of course this condition is validated like almost immediately but we actually have a very interesting like like very interesting application right i mean because we are talking about something that is on chip right Uh, this uh, double uh, this uh, circuit qd uh, double quantum dot thing is basically an on chip thing and what we can have actually is a on chip uh, pt symmetric laser with the usual thing like one mode being exponentially attenuated and the other mode being exponentially amplified and so on so this is like this can be one application so this is with uh, balanced gain loss but let's now go to a input output experiment with lossy cavities so why why what what do we mean by lossy cavities is that i added uh, some losses which are equal in both the cavities which makes this over, overall thing making such that this overall thing is lossy now and uh, so input output experiment i mean basically the standard one which is you uh, send a light like you weakly drive one cavity with some frequency and you look at the what is the output in the other uh, cavity and the interesting result here is that when this kappa is equal to 2 kappa 2 now this is something special that came out of the maths okay um there is a phase response which changes by plus minus pi when omega d crosses the eigen values so he, here is the plot and this will very nicely capture the pt symmetry uh, trans the pt transition actually so that is what is shown here so this left plot is uh, the amplitude the amplitude also sort of shows the so th these lines are the eigen values of the uh, of the hamiltonian except the without the kappas okay uh, and uh, so th this clearly shows uh, this thing but even more spectacularly it shows up in the phase because across these lines there is a phase change of pi so you clearly see this uh, very clear boundaries uh, which uh, show the the eigen values coalescing and so on so but but let me point out point out that there is nothing in these two plots there is nothing special about having a, a gain you should be able to see this even without the gain just in just 
two lossy cavities will actually uh, give this thing. You have to sort of uh, slightly recalculate this value, but it's it's completely doable. Okay, so this is with uh, lossy cavities, but let's get back to uh, with the gain. So once again, a lot of things are known. Uh, so there are loss induced effects in presence of the gain medium. Uh, so let's say we start, start so we, we will see this uh, known thing in PT symmetric literature, which is this loss induced lasing. Okay, so starting from a PT symmetric condition, so lambda greater than lambda AP, if we increase the loss of the cavity that does not contain that double quantum dot, so then the uh, eigenvalues of the non Hamiltonian Hamiltonian sort of go through another exceptional point, which is here. And then uh, one of the imaginary parts keep uh, be, uh, approaching zero and then becomes positive. So here is basically the uh, loss induced uh, lasing threshold. Then again, remember that this is very much known from PT symmetric literature, but we are talking about an on chip realization of this thing. So again, this is another application. Now, this is something that is known in classical PT symmetric optics. But this is something that is not that will require a quantum thing. So what is being plotted here uh, is uh, now we are below the threshold, right? We are somewhere here, and we are doing still doing this this same condition. Now we are looking at the expectation values of uh, the, the we are looking at the photon numbers, average photon numbers. Now the overall cavities are lossy in this regime, right? And so what will happen if you, if you did not have any quantum fluctuations coming from the gain medium, you would essentially see that this, uh, you will say that uh, basically the, the occupation or the photon numbers in the cavity should be zero. However, uh, now we have the quantum fluctuations coming from the gain medium, which is uh, basically what is happening is this population inverted qubit is spontaneously generating photons. And as you increase, the loss of one of the cavities, the photons are getting trapped within the cavities. So this is a sort of counterintuitive effect, but it's not counterintuitive if you think about uh, this, uh, this condition here, because this is happening just in the same, uh, for the same reason as this is basically approaching zero. But this is something that you will see in this experiment if you do that. And uh, again, this is another application but this re definitely requires a gain medium in the quantum regime. So you will not see this in classical PT uh, symmetric optics experiments. Also, you will not uh, see this in the existing quantum regime experiments because they do not feature a gain medium. Okay, so this is something that you will see only if you have a gain medium in quantum regime. So uh, that said, now let's, I'll, I want to talk about uh, uh, some, uh, some, issues regarding Lindbad descriptions or some more theoretical aspects about how to describe these setups. So you have uh, three minutes only left. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So I, I don't have much to say also. I don't care. So basically, uh, uh, if you microscopically derive this uh, local Lindblad, uh, uh, so if you microscopically derive the local Lindblad for this setup, you will actually get something like this. Okay, so we'll have three terms here. Now it's very tempting if you have a if you want to describe something with loss and gain, it's very tempting to write down something like this with a gain Lindblad and a loss Lindblad. However, this would be completely wrong for our setup. And why would this be wrong? Now let me just tell you the problem. The problem is basically it's very uh, common in this literature that you neglect the quantum jumps and you'll get some effective Hamiltonian and treat this as the, your non-Hamishan non -Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian. For both of these things, you'll get that same, but the quantum fluctuations that you get from here will be drastically less than what you get from here, okay? So that is uh, what is uh, shown here. So QME1 is the one that is microscopically derived and this is our previous uh, equation of motion results. And this is QME2, you see it's completely uh, much, much less than those things. I will also point out that even the microscopic Lindblad equation will most likely give wrong results if you look at higher point correlations like G2 functions. Okay, so that's it. Yeah, so this is uh, essentially the summary uh, that we you can do, you can build such a system and which has, 
can have some interesting applications. And the microscopic theory is very important and phenomenological theories with Lindblad equations, if you just write it down without caring about the microscopic theory, uh, it can give to wrong descriptions, lead to wrong descriptions. And so this opens a way for QT symmetric quantum technology, I guess. And the other thing which I like very much is if you, if you just think of just oscillations in the PT symmetric uh, case, you might think it's coming, it's, it's sort of violating the second law of thermodynamics, but if you have a microscopic theory and you can build this out of uh, that, you can start looking at the principles of thermodynamics uh, in this uh, PT symmetric system. So yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your talk. Are there any questions? I have one. Yeah, sure. Uh, hi. So thank you, uh, uh, Alchak, for, for the very nice talk. In fact, so I, I have several questions, but let me ask uh, the last one I, I got. So when it's about the, the remark about quantum jumps that you made at the end, do I understand you correctly when you say that um, if I just look at averages of observable, I can just neglect the quantum jumps and it won't affect my, my, my observables. For, for me, that's not clear at all. Uh, no, 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 sorry, uh, that's not uh, true. So if you look at only the expectation values of B1 and B2. Yes. Only then it will not affect the, uh, it will, this will not be affected by the quantum jumps. But if you look at occupations, it will definitely be affected by quantum jumps. And that's the point. And that's why, like, if you look at expectation value of B1 mm. and B2, these, both of these two equations are, will give you the same result, mm. right? But if you look at occupations, then these two will give very, very different results. And that's what is shown here, basically. Right? Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so so when you so it, it seems that there is a big difference, no? If you look at these bosonic modes, or if you look at if you look at the fermionic degrees of freedom of the qubits, for instance, uh, when you deal with these effective Hamiltonians and uh, and uh, and master equations, no? Uh, so so if you do the if you do the microscopic derivation, which is here. So mm. here is this QME1, and you see that QME1 is not too bad. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. It's, uh, it's yeah. okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, so if you do that, so you have to be careful, and if you want to derive the master equation, like you, you should derive the master equation from a microscopic principle, and then you sort of yeah. you can stay within yeah. the regime of validity. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Archit, uh, why there is no nice operator corresponding to the uh, res reservoirs into which uh, loss is yeah. happening? So that's only because I have taken uh, very low temperatures and I have actually neglected that in comparison. So, so when this is uh, very low, you can show that the main noise is uh, this one. The other one is much smaller compared to this. So I have checked it actually. I've, I've kept that and checked it that that really doesn't make any difference in these, at least in these time scales. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, are there any other questions? If, if there is if, time, I have a quick question. Yeah, uh, one okay. quick question is still possible, okay. So, uh, Jack, so at the beginning you emphasized now uh, that you're working, you're considering a hybrid circuit, but yeah. in fact, is there really uh, something very specific of uh, due to the hybrid circuit? Because you could imagine uh, working okay. with another system, no? Or yeah, yeah. So I mean, okay. So this is a good point. So I mean, everything I'm talking about is uh, so this, 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 uh, this formula essentially holds for two cavities with a population inverted. Uh, yes. In one of them, where the population inversion is somehow maintained. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and the and a way to achieve that is with the hybrid circuit. Yes, yes, but you can, can achieve that anything else, but any other way, these, these formulas will be correct. Yeah. I mean, it will still be holding. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you very much. Okay, then uh, thank you very much uh, for an interesting talk.